Howdy folks, welcome back to the shop. In today's episode, I'm gonna start taking the engine out. There's a couple things I wanted to cover before we get into that though. Uh, first and foremost, I am a shade tree mechanic. I am not a professional mechanic. I've never worked as a mechanic. I've never had someone teach me mechanics. Everything I've learned, I've learned by reading the Bentley, the How to Fix Your Volkswagen book, the Bosch fuel injection book, the Haynes manual, uh, the Samba.com, I, I am an autodidact, I teach myself. Um, so if you see a better way, feel free to make a comment down below. Tell me how to do something better. I'm here to learn as much as anything else. Um, I think it's better to get into something and get your hands dirty and make mistakes and learn from those mistakes. Uh, I tell my daughter all the time, mistakes are part of learning. Um, you gotta make some mistakes if you're gonna learn something. You gotta break some eggs if you're gonna make an omelet. Um, if you wanna be a great tennis player, you don't study tennis theory forever. You get on the court and you play some games. Studying theory, sure, it's important. But playing the game, also super important. Gotta get good by, uh, by, by actually doing. So partly this project is I'm gonna get good by doing. Um, I'm gonna do a bunch of engine work. I'm gonna do a bunch of mechanical work. I'm gonna do a bunch of body work. Um, I've done a little bit of body work in my day, but I've never done nearly as much as this needs. I'm gonna learn some welding. I've done a little bit of welding, but not much. I've had a welder for, you know, less than a year now. Um, and I'm mostly just fiddled around, did some patchwork that I showed you guys before on a previous episode. Be sure to check that out if you haven't already. Um, so that's that. The one other thing I wanted to cover today uh, before we get started some more is sometimes I mention a company or a product or uh, something else that I'm using. Um, none of those people are sponsors. I, I don't want to take sponsorship. Um, I want to be able to tell you guys the straight truth. Uh, I admire a lot uh, ABE. Check out his channel if you haven't seen it. He doesn't take money uh, from sponsors. He, he doesn't take free products from sponsors. He's got a Patreon where people contribute so he can buy tools and take them apart. Um, and I admire that. I, I think it's much better to be able to talk honestly about what's going on than it is to be sponsored. I see a lot of sort of, you know, van life kind of vloggers that are out there that are getting sponsorships, which is great because it allows them to, to lead their life. On the other hand, you know, they're not always being honest about, uh, about what's going on. They're, they're saying, these guys are great, and, and they probably are great. They're giving them some good stuff um, for, you know, in exchange for publicity. That's, that's how it makes the world turn. I understand that. I'm not trying to change the world. I'm just telling you how I feel about it. I have the resources to be able to do this um, without you know, needing to take sponsors. So, you know, if I mention a company, you can assume from here on out that that company did not give me that for free. I don't want free stuff. Um, I wanna be able to tell you honestly what I think of the products that I'm getting and, and how things are going in an honest way rather than trying to shine a bright Instagram light on how awesome everything is because it's not always awesome. Um, so that's that. With all that said, uh, let's get to it. So. Uh, basically, to take the engine out, I'm going to follow Richard Atwell's, otherwise known as Ratwell's, guide. Um, so step one is to take out the heater blower fan. Um, there's two 10 millimeters that hold it uh, up top. Uh, hard to get a shot of them with a the blaze cut in the way. Um, but one on each side. And then there's the, hover, the, the down tubes, essentially, that got to come out. Um, so those are got to be undone. And then there's two electrical connectors. Um, so those got to be undone. So I'm gonna do that next. I am gonna show you one trick, um, tools that I like. Um, so this is a Tekton Chrome Molly little swivel driver that are really great for being able to swivel back and forth this way. And these are the Weeble Wobble extensions. Um, so it's an extension that has, uh, you can either click the socket all the way on and then the socket stays on firm, or you can take it off and it'll Weeble Wobble just a little bit. The combination of the swivel here and the weeble wobble makes getting at bolts that are kind of recessed a little bit like this one is a whole lot easier. So then I can get in here and get at it and it doesn't matter that I'm not quite straight. I got room to maneuver a bit to get around the, the fan. So just a tip. So we got the blower fan down, now you can see the electrical connectors. This is not an original connector. Um, the original connector was all messed up. Um, so I replaced it with this uh, automotive grade connector. Um, they're actually really nice with some dust mitigation uh, rubber in, inside the connector. 
and this is the main connector to this 12 volt relay um, that actually powers the the fan so I'm gonna undo both these connectors here and there's the blower motor out um, I'm gonna test this guy separately he wasn't turning on so I mean as you can see the blower motor one of the interesting things is it has these little little blowback valves um, here um, to keep uh, air from blowing back out of the blower motor um, so there you go there's the blower motor another little tip here is um, obsessively label and bag everything as you take stuff apart um, I also even like to, to tape the parts that are associated together so I'll probably tape this little bag user onto the, the blower motor, uh, the blower fan, so that when it's time to put it all back together, you know exactly um, what you're doing. It also helps to take photos of stuff as you're taking it apart so you know how it goes back together. So the next step is to take out all these accessories here. This is the air filter. Um, there's the D-cell valve over here. They call this the S-boot. And this is the airflow meter. Um, clearly this airflow meter has been serviced at some point in time. It's got some silicon schmoo on it. Um, it was gluing the top back on. I don't know what they had to do to adjust it. Um, and it's got uh, uh, a little tie back here, um, zip tie. So uh, we're gonna take this part off next. Um, that involves removing a screw here that holds the bottom of the S boot, removing these two hoses, um, which are taped in the case of mine um, to, to uh, control the D-cell valve um, and otherwise removing this hose from the oil breather um, over on the other side, which on my case has also been taped with a bunch of white tape. Um, that's not a bad thing. I'm, these hoses are um, basically impossible to find at this point, um, so not bad to have them uh, taped up. I'll probably redo the taping on them and keep them if they're holding pressure reasonably well. Um, so that's that's the next step. Um, and then the, the main thing here is this flips up and if you undo this thing back here, this screw here, so let's undo that screw that holds the ass boot on. off the S boot we should be able to take out a whole bunch of stuff here pull these hoses off here this hose off here and this hose off here now uh, there's also the oh, this because this is 78 it also has the, the gas breather um, I have replaced this line basically when I got this bus two years ago I replaced everything that touches gas um, because you never know on these buses, they do burn, um, and you kind of want to replace everything that touches gas every five years because it does degrade, so that's all new. Um, and now we should be able to wibble wobble and get um, the gas boot to release. Here, come on. Get this guy out of the way. Set him aside. two hands and I'm gonna stop filming but I'll come back in just a bit all right well I pulled the AFM off the S boot um, and you can see there's a zip tie on the connector for the fuel injection harness um, I'm not sure why that zip tie but I don't know presumably it was coming apart sometime and somebody put a zip tie on it maybe they were trying to hold it on as well um, and it was zip tied around somehow I don't know anyway so there you go there's the AFM um, here's the airflow meter, there's the air filter, uh, air filter box, and now you can see the D-cell valve and the S-boot. See if I can get that to jiggle free now. Come on. Maybe I got a loosener somewhere. So, uh, previous owner replaced these screws that hold the 
license plate frame on with these little guys, and I have hit my head on these little bastards way too many times and poked myself. So we're gonna go ahead and fix that. Much better. All right, so this is the S boot coming out. <clears throat> I'm gonna reconnect the D cell valve to that one. Uh, when we're done pulling the D cell valve out, um, just the, it's a whole lot easier to put stuff back together if you don't take it apart. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the D cell valve has a has a pipe that runs down here to the intake manifold. Um, that helps it know what the intake vacuum is and, and then runs over here to the S on the other side of the intake. So that gives you a, a difference between the intake here and the intake here at the D-cell valve. And this vacuum hose over here runs over to, um, I don't know if you can see it back there. Um, that provides vacuum to the, uh, to the fuel pressure regulator that sits on the firewall back here. Um, that regulates the fuel pressure um, because the the airflow meter is designed to uh, provide uh, a, a constant prefer, pressure differential between the gas and the air in the intake. Um, and so the pressure on the fuel is adjusted by the vacuum signal coming out of here to raise and lower the fuel pressure so that the pressure differential is a constant so that the AFM can calculate based on how long it's open exactly, the, the, the injector is open exactly how long it takes to meter the fuel. So this is held on by two 10 millimeters back here. So I'm gonna undo those and pull this all out as one big unit um, so that I can put it back together as one big unit uh, since they'll be out until probably April. Another handy tip, get yourself some masking tape and a Sharpie and label things as you disconnect them. It makes it a whole lot easier when you've forgotten what the heck you did and you're reassembling it later. Uh, learn this lesson the hard way, so. You'll notice I, I did that labeling thing here, intake and the right engine tin for this. These go to the, the gasoline vapor recovery charcoal canister thingamabob, which sits back over here. His next thing is to remove the battery. So I already disconnected the negative terminal. Um, my positive terminal is this wire, which is super suspect. Uh, uh, this is done by a previous owner. We'll be swapping this um, for the proper wiring um, to the alternator. Three cables of smaller size does not equal the same as one bigger cable. Um, there's problems with that um, in that if one cable breaks, you suddenly have non-conduction through one of them and now you have way too much current rolling through the other one so don't do this this will be being replaced um but anyway when i redid the battery wiring which was completely wrong on this particular vehicle when i got it um i i didn't replace that because I, I didn't want to get to it right then but um but we will be doing that as part of this job here eventually um once the engine is all out so this is my positive battery terminal, um, essentially. So I'll be taking this bad boy off. Um, since that is the main positive into my battery setup. There we go. And the other one he wants you to take off is the... There we go. Put these guys back together. Because we are going to use the battery tender on this in just a little bit once it's out um all right so that's this is the wiring to the battery tender basically so i have it permanently installed basically so that i can just plug the battery tender in here and then it runs over and runs via this cross cable over into the other battery to keep both of them charged um but they'll both come out here shortly all right so gloves on because this this little thing is kind of sharp here um, there's a little connector on both sides, so you got to get the one on the other side too and push them both down. And then this tilts out. You can see, it kind of, I'm getting it, it kind of slots in. I'm blocking my own light here. It slots in at the top, and then you can take it off. 
the, the computer sits behind what is colloquially known as the paint can back here. Um, and that's where I'm going to stick my mega squirt system is behind the paint can um, and come out with the wiring harness here. Um, so there you go. There's the, there's the wiring harness off. And I'll pull the battery now and then I'll probably go over and pull the battery on the other side. But anyway, back in a bit. Can't do that with one hand. Now that the left side battery is out, you can see the horror show, which is some random metal pan, the poop of spray foam, which they didn't even get to seal the hole very well, or maybe it's rusted away from the spray foam. Um, trying to seal the water out, I guess. And uh, this is the ground line for the second battery, which I guess they felt that the body wasn't a good enough source of ground. So instead they poked a hole and went down under and that actually connects to one of the engine hangers over here, um, which is pretty crazy. So we'll be cleaning that up. Um, they also, not understanding that the body can be a ground, ran two wires for the aux stuff when they put in that secondary fridge. Um, so one is supposed to be ground and this is the hot wire. Um, that goes to the electrical system inside. So we'll be we'll be fixing that up later um, But you can see that this is a pretty bad horror show There's gonna be quite a bit of work in here and then in addition to that over here on the right side you got um, It looks like they sprayed this because it was rusting and for sure it leaks because I put in a battery box And it leaks down into the battery box, which is how this is rusting out um, I'm not sure where that leak is coming from, but there you go. It's not supposed to rain into your battery over here. And you can see the spray foam from the inside over here. So, and this battery tray, maybe there's not enough light in there to see, but there's some surface rust on it, but it doesn't look like the horror show of the random metal pan glued in with Lord only knows what and painted around that's over here. So anyway, a bunch of body work to do on that battery tray. Um, be getting a replacement for that in the not too distant future once the engine is out and uh, all that good stuff. So the next step is pulling all the gas out of the gas tank and disconnecting the gas lines. Um, so this is my little trick. I use a pair of vice grips with some hose, uh, some fuel hose over it. That makes a real nice clamp for clamping off the, the fuel lines. So. Um, in this case, and one way I like to drain the tank, but I already pulled the battery, is to connect a pipe and just turn on the fuel pump and pump it all out. But since the tank is actually gravity fed, we'll get under here. Um, and that's the fuel filter. So the near side of the fuel filter is gravity fed. So this is, I put this in with a screw clamp here. Um, and the idea is you take your vice grips and you clamp on the near side of that tube and you can pull the hose clamp off point that tube down here in your big gas can and collect all the gas and if the gas can is getting full you can clamp it off with the vice grips again and you won't get gas all over yourself so I'm gonna put on some big rubber gloves and take all the gas out All right, gasoline is out. Nasty, nasty stuff known by the state of cancer to cause California. Next up is the voltage regulator, which sits here on the firewall. And it's not a hard thing to do. Boom, that's disconnected. Now, you'll note that there's a ground wire here. This is actually my, my starter ground wire. So I'm gonna remove that as well. I don't think that's where that's supposed to be, but well, that's where it is, so. Off it's gonna come and that's the next step next up is pulling the throttle cable that's right back here a little eight millimeter it sits on top of the throttle body um, often there's slack in this cable which means you have to push down extra hard on the accelerator pedal um, or you can't reach top throttle because the cables too loose so there we go get that guy going Come on. And then the throttle cable just pulls out. I'm trying to do it so you can see. 
here we go. So now you can see it's adjustable to some degree by inserting it in further and tightening or loosening as is necessary. So you pull that guy out. There's your throttle cable. Now you don't want to lose that guy, so um, I don't. I prefer not to remove them all the way. Rattle says keep him somewhere safe, but I prefer to just leave them on there. There you go. And as you can see, my throttle return spring could use some love. It's probably not an original throttle return spring. Probably a Home Depot special that they stretched a bit to make it long enough. All right. Next on the list is the brake booster. That's this little vacuum line that runs from the brakes over here to grab um, to grab vacuum off the intake essentially and there's actually a little three-way T here um, mine's pretty stuck on so I'm gonna remove it after I get the engine off but there's your brake booster up and out of the way so um, Hope you enjoyed. Sorry we didn't finish taking the engine out, but maybe next time. I'm trying to keep these to a reasonable length uh, so that people enjoy them and so I can schedule them out at a reasonable pace. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and more content coming.